It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. You know, I was talking to someone the other day. Subject came up, and the person started arguing. I thought it was 2010. And I'm thinking to myself, what in the hell are we doing? Why are we having these same arguments we had back in 2010, or even worse, 1999? And then I thought, what a great episode for the end of the day with Ray. So without any further ado, I want to get on my Sharp Interactive board, pull up this slide. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot have 1999 or 2010 arguments in the year 2022. And yes, 2022 is only about 90 days away. So hopefully you're already there in your mind, right? Let's stop having these arguments that make no damn sense in our new modern world. And so I thought what I would do is I'd put some topics together. I'll, I'll, I'll mention the topic, and then I want you to answer the question to yourself. How would you argue this topic? Would you make your arguments based on 1999 or 2010? Or would you be fighting for relevance? Would you argue for a new relevance based on the topic? Here's an example. You find out there's an unauthorized competitor selling, selling the same thing you're authorized to sell, but they're unauthorized and they're selling it online. Huh, the world's going to end. How do you argue that? Do you call up the OEM and demand that they send a nasty letter to this company and tell them they're not allowed to be selling their products online and they're going to they're gonna sue them and you know cause the whole world to end for that company? Or do you call up the OEM and fight for relevance? Hey, there's a competitor selling your products online. I'm thinking to myself, I need you to help me sell your products online through me. I want to crush that company. I want to crush that company's online experience. Will you help me since I'm an authorized dealer for you and I've been your partner for the last 25 years? Would you help me crush that competitor online? You see, it's not about crushing the competitor to stop them from selling online. It's about you selling online better than the competitor. And if the OEM doesn't want to agree to that, doesn't want to help you fight for relevance, maybe you should look for another OEM. Folks, the OEMs out there did quite well with online purchasing through the global pandemic. Thankfully, thankfully, they had partners out there that understood e-commerce as far back as 10 years ago. And they were able to move a lot of their products through that experience. Well, the document imaging channel, what are they doing? They're still fighting about whether or not they should be online. They're still fighting with OEMs that some competitors in their marketplace sell it online. So when you hear people selling online, the question is, are you going to fight like it's 1999 or 2010, or are you going to fight like it's 2022? Let's fight for relevance. Here's another one, building flat rate. How are you arguing about this? This is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my whole life, to be honest with you folks. I've been talking about this no meter flat rate billing for a long time. It's just, it's, it's just nuts to me how our industry is treating this. How we think it's so damn complicated. I keep saying, if you know what your cost is and what you just delivered into the marketplace, you should be able to come up with all kinds of creative ways to bill it to the end user. That's all this flat rate thing is. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a way to bill something to an end user based on cost. We've got more DCA tools in this marketplace. We, we've known what customers run and we know how much supplies they've been using. We know this for a fact. We've known it for a decade, but yet we still can't figure out how to go to that customer and monetize an agreement with them that's based without a meter. It's just mind boggling to me. Are you gonna argue about relevance or are you gonna argue about status quo? Your argument should be, we're gonna go out into the marketplace and base our billing system without having to collect a meter. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to understand the cost of what we just delivered into the marketplace. It's that simple, folks. Fight for relevance. Digital selling. How many of you are arguing against all the great merits of digital selling? How many of you are saying, oh, we can't do that? We can't build great relationships with people and prospects and customers if we don't hug them and shake their hand and take them out to dinner all the time. I mean, we've got to see our customers. Our great relationships were built because we were, we were always with our customers. You can't do that online. You can't do that through Zoom. When in all reality, 85% of the purchasing decisions made online for the most part, almost probably a whole lot of decisions were made 100% online through the global pandemic. And a lot of those folks like that experience. Why are you not fighting to make your digital experience better than your competitors? Why are you not fighting to say, we've got to figure this digital experience out. We've got to figure out how to navigate our customers and prospects through that intersection Ray talks about between the physical and digital world. We're going to be the best at it. We're going to be experts at it. We're going to fight for a digital relevance. We're not going to fight against it like it's 1999 or 2010. OEMs aligning with new competitors based on A3 going to A4. How are we going to argue about this? Call up your OEM. Yeah, you're selling a whole lot of stuff. You know, 
through these tech companies. And I thought because, you know, we had this relationship for the last 50 years and we were like your authorized dealer in our marketplace that you wouldn't let that happen. That you wouldn't let them sell all these A4s. They're selling these things without even service contracts. I mean, it's crazy. There, there's, there's a company out there selling A4 and they're using augmented reality to fix it. It's crazy. It's destroying our business. Or are you going to fight for the realities around A4? And are you going to fix your service department to be able to monetize and profitize off of selling and delivering and servicing A4 in a whole different way? Are we fighting for relevance? Or are we fighting for status quo with regards to A4? Come on, folks. OEM sharing street pricing on equipment. This is a good one. I went to a meeting not too long ago and they were talking about how an OEM put up their subscription price for a machine and it was just outrageous and how in the world can they do this and we should call that company and raise all kinds of hell with that OEM because they're sharing prices online. Get over it. Get over it, folks. This low-end print stuff, the OEMs are going to share the pricing. Are you fighting for relevance or fighting for status quo? You should be trying to figure out how you could share your pricing online and deliver to that end user maybe alternative products and services along with the print equipment that's turning into a commodity more and more every day. But don't fight to keep it the way it used to be. That doesn't even make any sense. No, no, OEMs, you cannot share pricing online. We want our salespeople to be able to go into those accounts we got to get them to prematurely upgrade leases, you know, two years early. They got to roll the buyout, store it in the warehouse, do all these things that we're so used to doing. You start sharing prices online, well, then the end users know that they could have bought that machine for half the price we were trying to sell it to them for. Folks, this is just insane. Give your end users a little more credit. They're starting to realize real quick what things cost. And they're also, they're also engaging in digital experiences to find that information out. And if you're not there with the information that they need when they're in that digital landscape, when they're in that intersection between the digital and physical world, if you're not there, well, you're going to miss a whole lot of customers. And you're going to lose a whole lot of great relationships that get served a better experience in that intersection. Quit arguing about things that are just stupid. And let's argue about relevance. And here's the last one I want to talk about. Managed IT services. Folks, the arguments for you to get into managed IT services are basically the same as they were in 2010. I recently read an article and there's a few companies talking about their master service product. And, and I'm reading these articles. They could have been copied and pasted from a magazine that was written in 2010. The only thing that they added to the verbiage was cybersecurity or something. And we wonder why it's been a miserable disaster trying to get the document imaging channel to sell IT services over the last 12 years. Are we arguing for or against a position based on 2010? Or are we going to base those arguments on 2022, the realities of the market all around us? I strongly suggest we start basing our arguments on 2022 because, ladies and gentlemen, we all know what's coming. Augmented reality is a great example. We're trying to figure out how we're going to sell a, a printer and an MFP without collecting a meter reading. Well, the real innovators are out there trying to figure out how they're going to sell an augmented reality session to fix the A4 by the hallway on a subscription model. Hey, just pay us when you actually use the software. Folks, that's what the innovators are doing. The innovators are looking at all the complexities in changing the way the old way delivers into the marketplace and take those complexities, make it a little bit easier and deliver your great relationship a better experience. Please don't start thinking and don't start defending the realities of the market with arguments from 2010 or 1999. Because we all know this, my friends, status quo is the killer of all it'll be invented.